Hello viewers, here is a Holmes twin window fan. This is a model HAWF2072 from December of 1999. This, I almost didn't get this because it was sitting like this. Uh, on the bottom of the shelf at the thrift store and from a distance doesn't even necessarily look like a fan and so I walked right by it at first I didn't even notice it and then I was looking at something on the shelf above and then I could see the blade in there so oh, that's an interesting fan so I grabbed it and then I was looking at it later and it was only then that I discovered what a cool find this actually was this, I believe, is the predecessor to this other model here. This model. And this one is a model HAWF 2041. And we'll have another video on this one soon, too. This is another one I got the same day. Actually, no, I got this a little bit after the other one. But anyways, we'll get a video on that do an initial checkout and we'll do a, a clean and service on that one too but anyways back to this one so this one this is a really cool uh, fan and I didn't even know that this model existed it's got a lot of functionalities uh, to it some that I've never really seen before so let's take a look at the controls quite elaborate we have independently controlled fans four speeds each each is electrically reversible there's a thermostatic control and there is an oscillation control so um, it's got pretty substantial motors in it it's, it's quite heavy too Those motors are probably a good three inches long. It, it's no joke. And in total, this draws um, 1.47 amps. So it's got a lot of power to it. I would imagine those are PSC motors. I don't know where the capacitor is located. I haven't opened this thing up yet. I don't know if it'll pick up on the video, but it's very yellowed from the back. It's missing one of these tabs to keep it in the window, but as long as it's got one, I think that'll be okay. Looks like this is the uh, means of removing this out. I'm not really sure how this comes out of the bottom. Well, I don't know how to move this out, but it's there. Oh, there we go. It's just jammed. And so it only opens like an inch. Oh, there's a deplorable in there. Let's get that out of there. Okay. So I'm going to leave that closed for now because that's got to be pretty brittle all right well let's give it a test run unfortunately I did not get the side extension with it the, the hard plastic one that slides on but I think this is big enough that it would fit pretty much the full length of any window that I would ever use it anyways. Okay. So let's start by showing one of the more unusual functionalities. Oscillation.
I'm not really sure why they wired it this way. I would have thought that this switch would be after these switches so that it wouldn't oscillate unless the fan was on. Uh, but it's not. It's a complete independent control mechanism. So let's turn it on. I'll start with the intake setting and we'll go up to high. It actually moves a lot of air. It's really quite powerful. down to medium and low and sleep which is very disappointing the sleep setting I thought that was going to be really quiet but it's really only a notch above low which is still relatively loud but it's still throwing in a lot of air, even in the sleep speed. But uh, it's loud. I really would not want to use this at, at night. And this is kind of hard to turn. I don't know if there's something wrong with the switch. But... After all these years, the spin down time is still relatively good. That's a testament to the quality of the motors. Try exhaust. You can see the, the amount of air this moves is, is, is pretty impressive. This probably has a very high CFM volume. The, the difference between low and sleep is probably the least difference of all the speeds. It still moves plenty of air um, in reverse as well. All right, let's do the other fan. This one sounds to be a little bit healthier. And just to show how much power these motors have, I'll throw the reverse switch here. It turns it around almost instantly. Alright, so we'll turn them both on and then do sleep just to try to keep the noise level as low as possible. Test out the oscillation. That seems to work perfectly. And it actually does make a noticeable difference in terms of where the air is directed. And now we'll test the thermostat. That seems to work. Now, interestingly enough, the thermostat will cut off the oscillation. So the thermostat is wired after the thermostat, or after the, no, <laughs> I gotta go to sleep. The oscillation is wired after the thermostat, but not after the speed control. And I guess it's because you need a little bit more of a complicated logic because it's possible this fan could be on, this fan could be off. Um, so anyways. That seems to work. Let's turn that back on. Oscillation resumes. Let's go back to high. Let's watch the spin down and compare the two. Huh, that's interesting. Being that sounds like it runs faster, stops sooner. All right. 
So that's that. These switches, I think, need to be cleaned. So there we go. That's the Holmes, whatever the model number was. It's a pretty cool fan. Definitely one of the most sophisticated window fans I've ever seen. So I hope this cleans up well. And um, just be a good fan to you somewhere. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.